At 6.30 p.m. on the evening of April 20, 1889, he was born in the small Austrian village of Braunau im Inn just across the border from German Bavaria. Adolf Hitler would one day lead a movement that placed supreme importance on a person's family tree even making it a matter of life and death. However, his own family tree was quite mixed up and would be a lifelong source of embarrassment and concern to him. Hitler's father. His father, Alois, was born in 1837. He was the illegitimate son of Maria Anna Schickelgruber and her unknown mate, which may have been someone from the neighborhood or a poor millworker named Johann Georg Hedler. It is also remotely possible Adolf Hitler's grandfather was Jewish. Maria Schickelgruber was said to have been employed as a cook in the household of a wealthy Jewish family named Frankenberger. There is some speculation their 19-year-old son got her pregnant and regularly sent her money after the birth of Alois. Adolf Hitler would never know for sure just who his grandfather was. He did know that when his father Alois was about five years old, Maria Schickelgruber married Johann Georg Hedler. The marriage lasted five years until her death of natural causes, at which time Alois went to live on a small farm with his uncle. At age 13, Young Alois had enough of farm life and set out for the city of Vienna to make something of himself. He worked as a shoemaker's apprentice then later enlisted in the Austrian civil service, becoming a junior customs official. He worked hard as a civil servant and eventually became a supervisor. By 1875 he achieved the rank of senior assistant inspector, a big accomplishment for the former poor farm boy with little formal education. At this time an event occurred that would have big implications for the future. Alois had always used the last name of his mother, Schickelgruber, and thus was always called Alois Schickelgruber. He made no attempt to hide the fact that he was illegitimate since it was common in rural Austria. But after his success in the civil service, his proud uncle from the small farm convinced him to change his last name to match his own, Hedler, and continue the family name. However, when it came time to write the name down in the record book it was spelled as Hitler. And so, in 1876, at age 39, Alois Schickelgruber became Alois Hitler. This is important because it is hard to imagine tens of thousands of Germans shouting, Heil Schickelgruber, instead of, Heil Hitler, marrying the pregnant Clara Polzel. In 1885, after numerous affairs and two other marriages ended, the widowed Alois Hitler, 48, married the pregnant Clara Polzel, 24, the granddaughter of Uncle Hedler. Technically, because of the name change, she was his own niece and so he had to get special permission from the Catholic Church. The children from his previous marriage, Alois Hitler Jr. and Angela, attended the wedding and lived with them afterwards. Clara Polzel eventually gave birth to two boys and a girl, all of whom died. On April 20, 1889, her fourth child, Adolf, was born healthy and was baptized a Roman Catholic. Hitler's father was now 52 years old. Throughout his early days, young Adolf's mother feared losing him as well and lavished much care and affection on him. His father was busy working most of the time and also spent a lot of time on his main hobby, keeping bees. Baby Adolf had the nickname, Adi. When he was almost five, in 1893, his mother gave birth to a brother, Edmund. In 1896 came a sister, Paula. Watchful eyes and Hitler's boyhood. In May of 1895 at age six, young Adolf Hitler entered first grade in the public school in the village of Fischelheim near Linz, Austria. In 1895, at age six, two important events happened in the life of young Adolf Hitler. First, the unrestrained, carefree days he had enjoyed up to now came to an end as he entered primary school. Secondly, his father retired on a pension from the Austrian civil service. This meant a double dose of supervision, discipline and regimentation under the watchful eyes of teachers at school and his strict father at home. His father, now 58, had spent most of his life working his way up through the civil service ranks. 
He was used to giving orders and having them obeyed and also expected this from his children. The Hitler family lived on a small farm outside of Linz, Austria. The children had farm chores to perform along with their schoolwork. Hitler's mother was now preoccupied with caring for her new son, Edmund. In 1896, she gave birth to a girl, Halle. The Hitler household now consisted of Adolf, little brother Edmund, little sister Paula, older half-brother Alois Jr., older half-sister Angela and two parents who were home all the time. It was a crowded, noisy little farmhouse that seems to have gotten on the nerves on Hitler's father who found retirement after 40 years of work to be difficult. The oldest boy, Alois Jr., 13, bore the brunt of his father's discontent, including harsh words and occasional beatings. A year later, at age 14, young Alois had enough of this treatment and ran away from home, never to see his father again. This put young Adolf, age 7, next in line for the same treatment. Also at this time, the family moved off the farm to the town of Lambach, Austria, halfway between Linz and Salzburg. This was the first of several moves the family would make during the restless retirement of Hitler's father. For young Adolf, the move to Lambach meant an end to farm chores and more time to play. There was an old Catholic Benedictine monastery in the town. The ancient monastery was decorated with carved stones and woodwork that included several swastikas. Adolf attended school there and saw them every day. They had been put there in the 1800s by the ruling abbot as a pun or play on words. His name essentially sounded like the German word for swastika, Hackenkreuz. Young Hitler did well in the monastery school and also took part in the boys' choir. He was said to have had a fine singing voice. Years later, Hitler would say the solemn pageantry of the High Mass and other Catholic ceremonies was quite intoxicating and left a very deep impression. As a young boy he idolized the priests and for two years seriously considered becoming a priest himself. He especially admired the abbot in charge, who ruled his black-robed monks with supreme authority. At home Hitler sometimes played priest and even included long sermons. At age nine, he got into schoolboy mischief. He was caught smoking a cigarette by one of the priests, but was forgiven and not punished. His favorite game to play outside was cowboys and Indians. Tales of the American West were very popular among boys in Austria and Germany. Books by James Fenimore Cooper and especially German writer Karl May were eagerly read and reenacted. May, who had never been to America, invented a hero named Old Shatterhand, a white man who always won his battles with Native Americans, defeating his enemies through sheer willpower and bravery. Young Hitler read and reread every one of May's books about Old Shatterhand, totaling more than 70 novels. He continued to read them even as Fuhrer. During the German attack on Soviet Russia, he sometimes referred to the Russians as Redskins and ordered his officers to carry May's books about fighting Indians. In describing his boyhood, Hitler later said of himself that he was an argumentative little ringleader who liked to stay outside and hang around with husky boys. His half-brother Alois later described him as quick to anger and spoiled by his indulgent mother. War Lover In 1898, the Hitler family moved once again to the village of Leonding, close to Linz. They settled into a small house with a garden located next to a cemetery. This meant another change of schools for Adolf. He found school easy and got good grades with little effort. He also discovered he had considerable talent for drawing, especially sketching buildings. He had the ability to look at a building, memorize the architectural details, and accurately reproduce it on paper, entirely from memory. One day, Young Hitler went rummaging through his father's book collection and came across several of a military nature, including a picture book on the War of 1870-71 between the Germans and the French. By Hitler's own account, this book became an obsession. He read it over and over, becoming convinced it had been a glorious event. It was not long before the great historic struggle had become my greatest spiritual experience. From then on, I became more and more enthusiastic about everything that was in any was connected with war, 
for that matter, with soldiering, Hitler stated in his book Mein Kampf. Cowboys and Indians gave way to battle reenactments, especially after the Boer War broke out in Africa. Hitler, now 11 years old, took the side of the Boers against the English and never tired of playing war. Sometimes, he even wore out the boys he was playing with and then simply went and found other boys to continue. But now at home, tragedy struck. Adolf's little brother Edmund, age 6, died of measles. Adolf, the boy who loved warplay and its pretend death now had to confront genuine death for the first time. It seems to have shaken him badly. To make matters worse, the little boy was buried in the cemetery next to their house. From his bedroom window, Adolf could see the cemetery. Years later, neighbors recalled that young Adolf was sometimes seen at night sitting on the wall of the cemetery gazing up at the stars. Struggle between father and son. And there were now more problems for Adolf. His grade school years were coming to an end and he had to choose which type of secondary school to attend, classical or technical. By now, Young Hitler had dreams of one day becoming an artist. He wanted to go to the classical school. But his father wanted him to follow in his footsteps and become a civil servant and sent him to the technical high school in the city of Linz, in September 1900. Hitler, the country boy, was lost in the city and its big school. City kids also looked down on country kids who went to the school. He was very lonely and extremely unhappy. He did quite poorly his first year, getting kept back. He would later claim he wanted to show his father he was unsuited for technical education with its emphasis on mathematics and science and thus should have been allowed to become an artist. I thought that once my father saw what little progress I was making at the technical school, he would let me devote myself to the happiness I dreamed of," Hitler explained in Mein Kampf. There were frequent arguments at home between young Hitler and his father over his career choice. To the traditional-minded, authoritarian father, the idea of his son becoming an artist seemed utterly ridiculous. But in the grand scheme of things, as young Adolf saw it, the idea of a career spent sitting in an office all day long doing the boring paperwork of a civil servant was utterly horrible. The dream of becoming an artist seemed to be the answer to all his present-day problems. But his stubborn father refused to listen. And so, a bitter struggle began between father and son. Hitler began his second year at the high school as the oldest boy in his class since he had been kept back. This gave him the advantage over the other boys. Once again he became a little ringleader and even led the boys in after-school games of cowboys and Indians, becoming old Shatterhand. He managed to get better grades in his second year, but still failed mathematics. German Nationalism Another interest of great importance surfaced at this time, German nationalism. The area of Austria where Hitler grew up is close to the German border. Many Austrians along the border considered themselves to be German Austrians. Although they were subjects of the Austrian Habsburg monarchy and its multicultural empire, they expressed loyalty to the German imperial house of Hohenzollern and its Kaiser. In defiance of the Austrian monarchy, Adolf Hitler and his young friends liked to use the German greeting, Heil, and sing the German anthem, Deutschland über alles, instead of the Austrian imperial anthem. Hitler's father had worked as an Austrian imperial customs agent and continually expressed loyalty to the Habsburg monarchy, perhaps unknowingly encouraging his rebellious young son to give his loyalty to the German Kaiser. There was also a history teacher at school, Dr. Leopold Potsch, who touched Hitler's imagination with exciting tales of the glory of German figures such as Bismarck and Frederick the Great. For young Hitler, German nationalism quickly became an obsession. Adding to all this was another new interest, the operas of German composer Richard Wagner. Hitler saw his first opera at age 12 and was immediately captivated by its Germanic music, pagan myths, tales of ancient kings and knights and their glorious struggles against hated enemies. But now, for young Hitler, the struggle with his father was about to come to a sudden end. In January 1903, Hitler's father died suddenly of a lung hemorrhage, leaving his 13-year-old son as head of the Hitler household. Thank you for watching our video. 
Please like and subscribe to our World War II Enterprise History Channel to find more exciting historical content, and don't forget to the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned for more.